welcome to episode 28 of the Wool Jewel podcast. I'm Caitlin and this is my knitting podcast. Huge welcome to anybody new checking out the podcast. I hope you enjoy it and a big welcome back to all of my returning subscribers and viewers. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I am going to try to keep it kind of quick today because I only have about an hour to film this. So um, it kind of works out because I don't have as much knitting to show you today. I do have some fun stuff regardless. If you'd like to find me on social media, I am Wool Jewel on Instagram and Ravelry. We also have a Ravelry group called Wool Jewel Podcast and a new Facebook group that I started last month. So um, I was just thinking maybe the Facebook group would be a little more active than the Ravelry situation. So if you wanna join, I have all the links to that stuff in the description below. And it is a little bit rainy today, so if you hear some thunder, that's what that is. I've also got linked below my Patreon page if you would like to contribute to the podcast. There's some fun rewards involved. We have um, like a virtual knit night a couple times a year. So yeah, check it out and uh, let's get into the knitting stuff. I only have one knit along going on right now. And that's the Annie Sock Will Do Cal, and it is a year-long thing, so it's gonna be running until January. If you want to enter your socks into my sock knit along, there's a thread in the Ravelry group where you can do that and check out all the rules for that. And as some of you may know, I am coming up on 2,000 subscribers, which is awesome, so thank you everyone for subscribing. Totally makes my day when you subscribe. But when we hit 2,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a drawing, and I may or may not be taking that drawing from the sock knit along thread. So instead of just having a prompt that everybody answers to, to enter, I think I'm just going to be taking it from the Any Sock Will Do Cal thread because there's so many entries in there and it would be nice to give you guys some extra prizes as the year goes on instead of just one big one at the end. So that's going on. Um, yeah, I, that's it for cows, and I will get into finished objects. And you may notice that I am wearing something new. So this is my very first sweater design. I'm calling it Louie. And it has a lace yoke that turns into stranded color work. And I kind of wanted it to be like a big sunburst framing your face so um yeah i really really love it i'm really proud of myself it was a ton of work i don't know anything about being a knitwear designer but i'm figuring it out when i did my leg warmers pattern a few months ago it was a really really good experience to just kind of go through the whole process of designing and knitting and then writing out the pattern and having test knitters and doing the layout and publishing to Ravelry and like going through that whole thing with a more simple design because I didn't have to put in as much work into the actual design process for the leg warmers as I did for a garment. So once I got that all kind of figured out, I felt much more comfortable doing a garment design, which is what I really wanted to do in the first place. So I'm really, really excited. It was really helpful to do all of that. And yeah, it's been a really fun experience. It has been a lot more work than I was expecting, but it's not the kind of work that I don't like doing. I really enjoyed every single step of this. And coming from a person who failed algebra in college and had to take it twice. Like, I am so bad at algebra. I'm good at, okay, I'm like okay at certain kinds of math, but not algebra. And knitting math is all algebra, especially like grading for sizes and all of that. And I was just so proud of myself. I did so much math, oh my gosh. But I did it and I wrote it down and I, got it all and it's being tested right now. So huge, huge thank you to all of my pattern testers. Um, I am so excited to see this come to life. Okay, so enough about 
me excited about the actual pattern writing, um, I will talk about the sweater itself. So the yarn I used um, for the main color is a La Bianime Merino Twist. And so it's a sock yarn and it is in the colorway Paisley Nouveau, I think. And for the contrast color, I used Le Petit Point Parisien in the colorway Rue de Soledo, I think. <laughs> How's my French? Um, I will list those below. <laughs> but the, the contrast color is a BFL sock yarn and then the main color is a merino. So like I said, I wanted to have kind of this sunbursty shape framing the face. And since both of the yarns came from Paris, I wanted to give it a French name. And then I started thinking about this sunburst shape and um, Versailles because Louis XIV was the sun king and he has suns everywhere. And I love Louis XIV because he had a huge impact on um, dance culture and music culture and music in general because he was so into dancing. And I've played tons of music from his era and um, even learned a bit of Baroque dance as well. So like, I don't know, I'm just really into Baroque stuff, mostly from like, an artistic perspective. <laughs> I know that Louis XIV was maybe not like the best guy to have around, but he did a lot for dance and music, so I do appreciate him in that way. So um, I'm naming it Louis after him. Um, and it has been really, really fun seeing all the colors put together by the test knitters, so yeah. When those are all done, you guys will be able to see, especially if you're following following me on Instagram, I'll probably be reposting some of the versions of this. It's not a secret design or secret test knit in any way, because I have already shared it with everyone. But yeah, I'm really hoping to have this released in June. So I've sent the pattern off to a tech editor, and um, my friend Emily from Slow Fashion Rebel was super kind and is going to do the uh, layout and graphic design for the pattern for me. So thank you so much, Emily. I'm really, really excited. Also because the graphic design, like the layout of my first pattern took so much time. Like I was so surprised how long it took to do that whole thing. And it was like a one page pattern. The instructions fit all on one page, but then there's all these other pages with all the other info, it's just like, it took so long. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the right software. It was just, I don't know. It was a lot for me. So I'm really, really happy to have somebody who knows what they're doing do this for me. Um, yeah, so that's that. I will keep you guys posted when this pattern is released. I'm super excited. Okay, so moving on. Um, can you tell I'm in a rush today? So I only have two works in progress to show you. Three, I have three. I have three works in progress to show you. One of them is my Zweig, which you guys have already seen, so I'm gonna go grab it. Okay, here she is. Um, I took the tips off, so I have to be careful again. So I think last time I showed this to you guys, I was talking about how much I hated doing these little cables of the X's in the main part of the body and the sleeves. And I just kind of set it on a shelf not knowing what to do with it for a while because I didn't, I wanted some texture in the fabric but I hated making these little two stitch cables, just hated doing it. It was so fiddly and I didn't like it and I just knew it was gonna take me forever to finish. So, I frogged back to where the color work ended and just set it down for a while trying to decide what I was going to do with it and worked on some other stuff. And then 
Um, Celeste from Yarn to Table sent me a message and said, hey, Fruity Knitting just did a video on how to do these faux cables and they did the demonstration on its Vig sweater. So I knew it was gonna work and I had tried these faux cables in a round before, but I couldn't figure out how to get the faux cable to be left-leaning because you need a right-leaning one and a left-leaning one to get that X shape. So I could do the right leaning one, but I couldn't figure it out on my own how to do one that leaned left. And since this tutorial was done on this Vike sweater, I knew it was gonna be perfect because they were gonna cover both ways to do it. So I watched it and it worked and I'm doing it. And so now I've done three sets of them. So if you're knitting this Vig, which you probably are because everyone is, and you are tired of doing these cables, you can switch to these faux cables and it looks exactly the same. And um, so she said in the tutorial that she had been flipping back and forth between the real cables and the faux cables several times. And you, when you're looking at it, you can't tell which ones are which unless you really know what you're looking for. And even then it's like, you can't tell at all. So I'm really, really happy because now it's just flying by. Well, I say it's flying by, but I've only gone this far. <laughs> um, Cause I just haven't had as much time on this project past couple weeks. But anyway, I'm super pumped about that. And I don't really have anything else new to say about it. Go check out that tutorial. It is in the video called knitting behind bars, I think. So she does an interview with a woman who goes into prisons and teaches inmates to knit, which I thought was amazing. And I've seen Fruity Knitting before, but it's not one of my like regular catch it every time podcasts. I just kind of watch it occasionally. So I was really, really happy that Celeste sent me that. Thank you, Celeste, because I got the cables figured out and I was super into that interview. I think that is so cool. This woman is a badass for going into prisons and teaching these people to knit and she has the best stories. So go watch that episode. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it for Zweig. Oh yeah, if you're interested in the yarn, it is Madeline Tosh Twist light i think and the main color is whiskey barrel and the contrast color is marfa okay so my next work in progress is something else a little bit experimental so last year oh it's, no, it's not last year it was like two years ago before i moved to germany i knit the amelie dress by wool and the gang with their shiny happy cotton in this like bright coral red color. And I love it. It's the best color, but it's not super flattering on me because I think it's just too wide. It's really big. So I decided to make another one and I waited for a sale. After I knit the Amelie dress and I loved it so much, I decided I wanted one in black so I could have like a little black dress and so I got the kit on sale because I just waited until I saw a sale happening. I ordered the kit for the dress again in black and it's been sitting on my shelf for two years now. So I decided it's time. My sister's wedding is at the beginning of June and I might just make it. I might be able to wear this to the rehearsal dinner. That's the idea. So the Amelie dress is knit in pieces and then sewn together. And my first one I did, I even modified it to where um, I knit it bottom up in the round because there was no shaping. So it was like really easy to modify for in the round knitting. The problem with that is that the cotton is really heavy and it stretches. So as I wear that dress, it just gets longer and longer. Whereas if I had the seams on the side, the seams would prevent it from growing too much while wearing it. So lesson learned. And then another thing was I didn't quite like how high the neck came up. So I decided for this one, it's not technically the Amelie dress because I'm modifying it so much that like the only thing that's the same is the seed stitch, like the overall seed stitch. So I'll show you what I've got. 
it's kind of hard to see because it's black. It's all seed stitch and you're probably wondering what is going on. But I just decided to do some experimental construction here. So what I did was I cast on the back at the top. And I knit two rows and then I did some short row shaping so that I would get a slight, a slight um, shoulder shaping. Oh yeah, first I measured my gauge from my first Amelie dress and figured out how many stitches I needed to get a better fitting size. So I, I'm just essentially making it several inches more narrow. Anyway, so once I figured out how many I wanted to cast on due to my gauge, I did that, knit a couple rows, did some short row shaping, just like slight shaping, just so there's a little bit of something there. And then I knit down to where I felt like I'd want the sleeves to go. So this is the back down to where like a normal sleeve separation would be. Sorry, this black yarn is really blowing out my camera. Okay, so then... I decided I didn't want to knit two whole pieces. I know I learned my lesson with the in the round thing, but I think I'm gonna do it again anyway. I think I might put in some like reinforcement seams down the side, like with a crochet hook or something after I'm done with the whole thing. I'm just much faster in the round. So I'm gonna do that. And then, so after I knit down to where I wanted the sleeve separation to be, I picked up stitches along one side of the shoulders and I did some neck shaping. So I cast it on a few stitches to get this rounder shape every other row. And then I did the same thing on the other side. And then once they had enough increases to reach the middle, then I joined them. And so now I'm just knitting across the front. So I think I've seen other sweater patterns that have done this type of construction. I've never knit anything like it, but I know that it exists and people do it. So I just thought I'd try it. Um, yeah, and it's working, so, it's my dress. This is what I have. <laughs> yeah, so that's about it. Um, it's just going to be super simple, and I'm not going to do any waist shaping or anything, because now that it just has way fewer stitches than the other one, I think just having a shapeless but overall more narrow situation is gonna look a lot better. Um, but we'll see, I'll just try it on as I go. And so now I can just knit down to meet, to have the front piece the same length as the back piece and then I will join them in the round and just knit, knit, knit until I get to the bottom. So yeah, it's kind of fun. It's super mindless. I really, really enjoy seed stitch. I love one by one rib, seed stitch, double seed stitch. I love it all. I love the rhythm of the one by one. Um, Cause I knit continental. So it's it goes a lot more smoothly than when I used to throw and doing one by one was my least favorite thing, but now it's my favorite thing. So yeah, there's that. Hopefully I'll finish it. We'll see. The next work in progress I want to show you guys is the one I'm most excited about right now. Um, so a few weeks ago, the fiber company reached out and asked me if I wanted to apply to be a beta knitter for their beta knitting program, which is just basically test knitting. So they've already made all these had all these designs and a lookbook made and um, finished the patterns and had them tech edited and everything. And so now they're just sending out the patterns and the yarn to beta knitters to knit them up. So the way it works is they sent the lookbook and we would all choose three designs we were interested in knitting and then three colorways we were also interested in knitting. and. I was super lucky and got my first choice, even though I felt like all the choices I made could have been my first choice. 
The only reason this is my number one choice is because it's a cardigan and I haven't knit a cardigan in a really long time and I feel like I really need one right now. Um, and this is the colorway I'm knitting it in. Are you surprised? <laughs> yeah, it's called happiness. So I was like, of course, that's my first color choice and I'm super, super pumped. Um, the yarn is called Lore by the fiber company and it's 100% lamb's wool and it's about a DK weight and it is gorgeous. It has like all the texture you would want but it's not scratchy at all, at least not to me. I could see how some people might say it was but I could definitely wear it against the skin. So here's the swatch I made for the cardigan and I think it's the cutest thing I've ever made in my life. It has little cables and baubles all over it. So I'm allowed to share with you guys my progress on this and talk about the yarn and the project, but I can't show you what the finished thing is gonna look like. Um, so that you'll have to stay tuned for, but I can show you my progress so far because it's not that much progress. <laughs> okay, so this is knit from the bottom up. So I'm knitting the back and the two sides of the front all at once right now, so it's really, really long rows. It takes me quite a while to get across a row. And I'm super lame, and I didn't finish at the end of a row, so I'm showing this to you while I'm in the middle of a row. Let me see if I can kind of orient this to where you can see what's going on. Ah, <gasps> isn't it so cute? I love these baubles. And these are bigger baubles than I've ever put on a thing. So I haven't done this exact technique to make baubles before, but I love them. They're really pronounced and really squishy. Yay. And there's the part that I put in the swatch. Yeah, so it's gonna be really nice. It's not gonna have buttons, it's just gonna be like an open cardigan, but it looks like from the pictures I've seen that the front will still close all the way. I'm really excited, because that's the kind of cardigan I wanted. One thing that kind of keeps me from making cardigans is buttons, honestly. And so I've just kind of been waiting for the right cardigan pattern to come along where there's no buttons, but I still feel like it's gonna cover my front all the way if I need it to, and this is exactly that. And the color is perfect. I love this giant ribbing at the bottom. Yeah, and I can't remember if I've talked about it before, but I have been using a new cast on that I'm super into, and it's called Jenny's Slipknot Cast On. So this is the same Jenny that does Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off, which is the one I use all the time for socks and stuff, or anything where I need a stretchy ribbed bind off, but this Slipknot cast on looks amazing in ribbing, I think. A lot of cast ons I've used in ribbing, it kind of creates an extra edge or an extra line that doesn't really like blend into the ribbing that well, but I think that this just looks perfect. It doesn't add anything extra, but it's still super stretchy. It's the best. It kind of took a while. If you watch a tutorial, if you just YouTube Jenny's Slipknot cast on, you'll find it. It's not the most intuitive cast on, and it took me a while to get to feel comfortable, but I love it for several reasons. So first of all, I mean, besides the reasons I already showed you, I also love it because it's not a long tail cast on, meaning you can just make a slip knot with a tail this big and then just use the working yarn to do the cast on, which I love because for this, when I had to cast on over 250 stitches, I did not want to sit there and like measure out a huge long tail just to get that going. Plus for me, any cast on I've used with a long tail, it ends up twisting the yarn and it gets really annoying. So it'll either untwist it and then it's super splitty and annoying to use or it'll over twist it and then it gets all 
kinked up. I don't know if that happens to anyone else, but that's why I never use long tail casts on. But yeah, so I didn't have to sit there and measure out how much I was gonna need for 250 some odd stitches. I could just use the working yarn and then, and then yeah, like I said, you get the stretch, but you don't get the flare or an extra edge kind of added onto your ribbing. It just kind of looks like the ribbing just starts from nothing, which is amazing. So yeah, take the time. If you're into that, just take the time and figure it out with some scrap yarn and you will be glad you did. So yeah, I can't wait to show you guys more of this when Laura comes out. I highly recommend trying it. It's a beautiful yarn and so many of the other colorways were so pretty. It was, I want to say I had a hard time choosing what my first choice yarn would be, but I really didn't because Obviously, I was gonna choose this one, but there's a few others that I am considering buying to make a different sweater when it's released. Also, the collection that this pattern is coming from is called Borrowdale, and so also keep an eye out for that. So all these patterns will be released as a collection called Borrowdale, and this pattern is called Hovera and the designer is Annie Lupton. I have never knit any of her patterns before, but I am enjoying this one so far. Hopefully this won't take me too long. I think I'll be done, I'm supposed to be done in July, and I don't think it usually takes me that long to do something like this. But like I said, these rows are super long, so, um, and really cable-y and bobbly, which adds a lot of time, so, I don't know how long this is going to take me, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. And thank you so much to the Fiber Company for considering me. Um, I am really excited to be part of this and super honored that they asked me to do it too. So yeah, I'm really pumped. So that's about it for that one. And that's my last work in progress for today. Yeah, just kind of flying through today. Sorry guys, I feel super rushed. So since I don't have any more knitting stuff to show you guys. Um, I thought I would talk a little bit about my London trip I went on last week, which was um, kind of unplanned and spontaneous, but um, one of my best friends from childhood was doing a trip with her husband across Europe. So they were in Paris and they went to Belgium and the UK and I was supposed to meet them in Paris because for me it's a two and a half hour train. I thought that was going to be super easy to meet them there. We were going to go to Versailles and I was going to have her model my new sweater pattern. It was going to be perfect. And then there's this train strike going on in Paris right now. So it turns out that the days I was going to need to travel there were scheduled strike days, which meant that I'm there may have been no trains running and I wasn't gonna be able to get home if I missed a train. And I had to be home on a certain day so that I could get back to work and do things. I wasn't flexible enough that I could just miss a train. So I was getting really frustrated. I didn't know what to do. And then I was like, well, tell me where else you're going. Maybe I can meet you somewhere else instead. And then she was like, well, we're gonna be in London after this for a few days. And I looked at the flights just to see and I found 30 euro round trip tickets to London for those days which is way cheaper than the train to Paris so um, I booked that right away that all worked out all my violin students for those days anyway had already told me they couldn't come to their lessons that day so it was just like totally perfect and then she told me she had tickets to the cursed child uh, which I have tickets for in July and I was super excited to see it um, But she was gonna go with her husband and I was like, well, that's an all-day thing because it's two entire plays So it's four acts total and I was like, well, if you guys are gonna be seeing cursed child and I'm only there for like the one day Then I'm not gonna get to see you but she was like, well Frank, her husband, Frank, doesn't even like know about Harry Potter or anything. He didn't know what this play was or anything. So he gave me his ticket <laughs> so I could go see it with my friend. And then he was going to hang out with some other people that day. So it just like worked out so perfectly. I got to see the play, which was amazing. And yeah, 
they took my knitting needles away when I went into the theater. So be warned, if you go to shows in London, they may or may not take your pointy objects. So luckily I had my interchangeables and so I could leave, I had my Zweig with me. So I left it on the cable, I took the needles off, and I left them with the people. He said I could get them back, so he gave me like a coat check number and like taped my needles together and left them. Um, and he said I could pick them up at the stage door afterwards. I was like, okay, well, I can't knit during intermission, but it's fine, because I'll get them back. And so after the play, we went around back to the stage door and there was this line. It wasn't a super long line, but we just got in the line because I assumed that it was to get pointy objects back. <laughs> and then all the actors started to come out of this door. That was where this line was. And I was like totally starstruck. I couldn't believe it. Um, I was in the right place, but it turns out I didn't need to stand in the line to get my needles back. I could have just asked somebody, <laughs> but I just assumed that everybody was waiting to get their stuff back. So I was just standing there waiting and all these actors started coming out and it was incredible. We got to talk to them. I got their autographs. They signed my ticket and um, yeah, I was not prepared for that. It was a total surprise and now I'm like really glad that they took my needles because I never would have thought to go to the stage door um, to meet people. I And like it wasn't crazy crowded. They were super kind and um, the woman who played Hermione was so sweet. Like she made me cry just because she was so nice and she played Hermione so well and I don't know. Hermione's really special to me obviously but I don't know. So yeah, it was just an incredible experience and I got some pictures with them. It was super fun so I can't wait to go back in July and I didn't read the book or the script before I saw it so everything was a total surprise and it went by so fast and like they were kind of talking really fast and I was like wait I don't know it's like going too fast and come back and so <laughs> now that I've seen it and I know what all the surprises are and stuff um, I'm gonna read the script and I'm gonna see it in July and hopefully be able to take in a little bit more as I watch it and now I'm gonna be prepared for the whole stage door experience and I'm just gonna try to get there a little bit earlier because I think I missed some people that I wanted to meet, so. Yeah, that was super fun. So also while I was in London, I got to go to a couple yarn shops. I went to Loop London, which I've been to before, and Wild and Wooly for the first time. So thank you, Amy from Stranded. I sent her a message. I was like, I'm in London by myself because I got there like a whole day before my friends did. And so I had this whole day to kill all by myself and I was going to stay in their hotel with them. So I couldn't even like go drop my stuff off at a hotel because I had to wait for them to check in. Anyway, so I sent Amy a message and asked her what her favorite spots were to either knit or shop or whatever and she suggested Wild and Wooly. So it's a little bit further out of London, but it was totally worth it. It's a small shop, but there is some really special stuff in there and the owner, I don't remember her name right now, but she's super, super nice and I was so tired because I was running on an hour and a half of sleep and she just let me like sit at her table and knit and just kind of space out for a little bit because I kind of had nowhere to go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got some awesome stuff there that I will share in the next wool booty video. So stay tuned for that. I'm hoping to film that kind of soon because um, I have a lot of new stuff to share with you guys. Um, I also got one thing at Loop London. Um, I went there first. And like I said, I was super tired. I was running on no sleep and I got up at 3 a.m. to catch my flight. And so I was just having a rough time. I just wanted to go to a yarn shop and like maybe sit and knit for a while, do a little bit of shopping, look at books, just kind of rest. And, you know, talking to other knitters, like just interacting with people can make you wake up a little bit. And so I was like really looking forward to this. 
and I got there and they just did not seem super thrilled to have me sit on their couch and knit. I think that they just like wanted me to shop and then leave. I mean, they weren't, they weren't rude to my face or anything, but um, I don't know. I just didn't get the sense of like that warm, welcoming, come hang out and knit type of feeling that I get from most local yarn shops I've been to. So I bought some yarn and I went upstairs and sat on their couch and browsed through some books, trying to decide if I wanted to buy more yarn and talk to some people a little bit, but then I just, I don't know, I just like wasn't feeling like I should be there, so I left. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if it was just me being super insecure or what, but yeah. So I went to a restaurant that was on the same block and I sat and knit there and I had lunch and then I went to Wild and Woolly and I stayed there until she closed and then I took a super slow, super long bus all the way back to where the hotel was, which was perfect. And then I just hung out in the lobby until my friends got there. So that was my day alone in London and then the next day we saw Cursed Child and then I left at 6 a.m. the next day. So it was a super short trip and it was really fun to see my friend Sarah so yeah that was it so that's about it for today you guys I'm sorry that I feel super rushed um, I have a lesson to teach I'm starting to teach violin out of my house now so somebody's coming over in about 20 minutes for their lesson and um, I spent most of the day resting because I have this injury from dancing. I have apparently sprained some ligaments near my rib cage on my right side from dancing, <laughs> which sucks so bad. Um, we have a show on June 9th and I'm doing this pas de deux. For those of you who don't know, it's just like a two person like partner dance in ballet. And so there's a lot of like lifting and um, things where I have to be supported by another human and there's a lift that we do where he's holding me um, on my side and so I think we did it incorrectly or something um, and I sprained stuff in there. <laughs> I got an x-ray last night and luckily there's no fracture or anything. It hurts a lot like moving certain ways hurts a lot and my doctor told me I can't bend or twist my torso in any way or I will prevent it healing. So that means no dancing basically, which stinks because we have a show next week and or in two weeks and so I can't rehearse anymore and I've decided I think I'm going to do the show. There's like no replacement really for my part so I think I'm going to stop dancing until like the day before the show and run it and see if I can do it. Um, Cause I think it's like a two minute dance. Running it a couple times isn't going to prevent it healing that much, but I want to do it. I just, I want to do it. So we're going to see, but he said that it could take over a month to heal. And if I've got two weeks before I have to do it, then hopefully it'll be healed enough where like doing one dance isn't gonna knock it out of whack too much. So anyway, um, things are painful and it stinks and I've been dealing with this for over a week now and then yesterday, and I didn't go to a doctor and then yesterday at a rehearsal, I fell over and my partner caught me before I fell, but he caught me on my ribs, like where the injury is and so it made it worse actually him catching me. I should have just fallen to the ground and I would have been fine. <laughs> but yeah, so that's fun dealing with that. So I'm just going to try to keep this short because the less sitting at my desk editing I have to do afterwards, then the better and I can just go lie down and knit. So I'm um, sorry you guys again for being super rushed today, but that's all I've got for you and feel free to join the Facebook group and the Ravelry group. Like I said, they're linked below. So if you feel like it, give this video a thumbs up. That would help me out a lot. And 
um, leave a comment. Let me know what you're knitting. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.